hello everyone and welcome back to my channel so this is going to be a new video series for the bearing diagnosis we are going to see the data set provided by case western reserve university with uh, the bearing data set that they have provided and uh, in this video particularly we are going to see how they have collected this data how you can download this data and the pre-processing is necessary for this data to be usable in any machine learning algorithm. Okay, this is a very famous data set and in, um, this has been used as a standard for any kind of uh, um, any kind of data driven machine learning algorithm or papers that has been developed as a standard. Alright, so, um, so there is that. Let's see what is the data set is about. This is the link from where you can download this data is their official link I'll post it in my video as well once you go into this link you need to go to this apparatus uh, here the overview of data is there you go to apparatus and procedure to see how the data has been created this is the experimental setup and the bearing is here inside here so they use this bearing they introduced manually different kinds of fault using uh, electron discharge machining faults we see so here it is written single point faults were introduced to the test bearing using electro discharge machining with different fault diameters all right and uh, once the uh, once the fault then the then the bearing are run and their vibration data has been collected using accelerometers and the data is saved in MATLAB MATLAB in dot mat format the sampling frequency was for some cases it was 12,000 samples for set so 12,000 hertz and for some it was 48,000 hertz all right and then this is a description of the outer race fault they have introduced a small description of that okay now let's Okay guys, so let's see how the data set is distributed uh, for a CW for this case Western data set. This is the normal, this is the normal case where there is no fault. This is the outer race, outer outer race fault where if you zoom zoom in this part, there is a fault at the outer case. This is the inner race fault. So this part is the inner race. And a fault at a small fault you can see here has been introduced in the inner race fault and ball fault the ball used in the bearing they some fault is introduced there so this is how the fault has been introduced and how it looks like in a rough way and to see we have total these uh, these are the total type of faults that we have first is the normal condition then we have inner race fault ball fault and three types of outer race fault. The first one is uh, as the outer race stays stationary as compared to the inner race. So first one is introduced zero degree at zero degree to the applied load. Next one is introduced at 90 degree at 90 degree to the applied load and another one is 180 degree to the applied load. And they will have different consequences on their vibration data as uh, they, they they have unique vibration signal so that is that next coming to the next part there are three types of fault like these are the category of fault but the severity of fault also they have changed so initially we saw this these all fault what are they and what do they signify and then what is this 0 0.0071 inch this is basically the depth depth of the fault so here as you can see this this depth this depth they have changed time to time and collected various data so the for 0 0.0071 inch fault all this fault have been calculated then the uh, depth of the fault is increased to 0 0.014 inch and then 0 0.021 inch for the 0 0.041 inch fault, these two are not available. To see the data set, we'll go here, data files, and all it. So 
these are the data everything is saved in dot mat file these are the ab abbreviations that they have used and there is that first we will go and see the normal baseline data so if you click here you can download the normal baseline data let's go and we are focusing on the 48k drive and bearing phone here we will go for the 0.007 inch fault these are the total type of fault they have uh, obtained for the zero load condition and what is this load let's see all right so for load 01 as we have seen in the previous slide all these fault categories have been introduced so total how many categories we have 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 so total 14 types of fault are there for a single condition for single load condition but as the load condition changes uh, during any application so they have also obtained for different load condition so after obtaining this for zero load condition they um, they obtain the same data for load one for load two and for load three in load one refers to one hp load two hp load and three hp load but in this video we are just going to focus on this one load zero condition get obtain the data for that and in the next video so we'll see how we can get the data for other load conditions now so this is the uh, data link from where you can directly come to this site or you can just press on here the data files so in this case for 0 0.007 we are only going to take the zero load condition so initially we will download all this data then all these data and then all this data these are for the fault condition and for the normal bearing condition we will go to the normal baseline data and from here we will obtain this normal zero condition so I will show you how you download the data suppose you come here and you want to download the inner race fault you click here once the data has been downloaded you go to the folder and then as this is the inner race fault you uh, rename it 007 IR this is so this means 0007 um, inch fault for the inner race so that's how I have created the data set I will link I'll give the data set in my github so that you can go and check it out okay so this is the uh, this is my file and uh, I've created one folder called zero load 48 zero load condition and the sampling rate 40 kilos in that I have obtained all the data set that I have just shown here this uh, say these four these three again this five and finally the normal condition so total 14 files we have these are the 14 files we have and it is saved under the zero load 48 kilowatts file well now that we have seen where the data has been downloaded like where we can download the data let's focus on the operation like how we can operate on this data and how we can convert it into a data set from where we can use different kind of machine learning algorithms or for sake deep learning algorithm uh, this is the jupyter notebook for the entire file and the, uh, the only difference is this one scipy.io I'm implying I'm importing this one just to use just to operate on the dot mat files because here all the data are in dot mat files okay let me show you what is the position of what is the location of this one well see uh, this is my the file that I created in the last video and this is the Jupyter notebook I have all right so I'm going to so all the files are in this folder coming back to here I'm going to use os.walk on this folder then get the files name and using os.path join I'm going to join the root directory with the file name so that I'll get the path for that particular file and if I just run this one I'll get the path for each and every file okay suppose uh, 
I I want to um, okay. So I want to proceed with this uh, this particular one which is here. So I'll import the path. I'll put the path name here, and then I'll use the scipy dot io load mat function to get to uh, open this file. And here the mat is a dictionary. So let's see what the what are the things inside the dictionary. In this particular dictionary, we have like keys. These are the keys, and these are the values for this key. This is this is another key, and this is the value. So DE refers to the drive and data, and FE refers to the fan and data. And there is a RPM value as well. Like in which RPM it has been collected. But we only need the DE value. Like the drive and acceleration, we don't need the other one. For that, uh, first I'm going to see what are the keys in my dictionary. So I'll just do mat dot keys as mat is my dictionary. So this is the list of keys I have. I just want to access the third, third, uh, uh, the third key. So zero, one, two, three. So I just want this name, the drive and uh, time. So I'll put list uh, third element of the list, and I'll save that in a key name variable. Right. Edit that. Then I'll use the same key to get the value from my dictionary from the mat dictionary. This get function takes input as the key name and outputs the value. So my d data if I show you. Well, now it's there. This is the same array as this one. Okay. Once the data has been created, now I need to label it. So in order to obtain the label, I need to create. Like finally, this is what I want. I want my fault to be a same length, same length as my uh, DE data. So I'll I'll use the np dot full function. This is the dimension of my array, which will have uh, like the number of rows will be same as the value of DE data, and uh, what is uh, the string that I want to have is file name. Let's see what is file name here. Okay, so this file name will keep on iterating using this one. So yeah, first the file name will be uh, BA then IR then OR1 something like that. So that that's what I'm seeing. This file name will keep on iterating through the entire file, and so I'll I'll use uh, minus four. Basically, I'm just neglecting this one, not only taking the final normal. Okay, once my fault this fault uh, variable has the array of fault names and DE data has the expression data. This both are this this both are of the same length. So finally, I'll create a data frame with these two columns, and this is how it looks like. All right. I just plot the first uh, uh, first column. Okay, this is what it looks like. But this is this is what I did only for the one fault condition. But I need to do for the entire file. For all these files, so for that I'll use the for loop. This is the for loop I'm going to use. And initially I'll create a data frame, an empty data frame, same col column names. Then I'm just going to append the uh, append the data with the df temp, where df temp will keep on changing according to this for loop and the file name. Now if I run this for loop, which will keep on iterating through the all the fault data set. And finally, it will save it in the file name called all faults dot csv. Okay, so finally, we have total 14 type of 14 different type of fault labels, and that is saved in the all fault csv. The same one. So this is the all faults data that I have. Okay, so in it, that was all about the data preprocessing step, and. Uh, In order to visualize the data, I'm going to use this uh, block of code. In the faults, I'm going to save all the different kind of faults I have in my data frame. If I give you an idea, what is my DF looks like? 
So this is what it looks like. It has all the faults in one column and their corresponding acceleration data on the DE data column. Okay, if I do df fault.unique, it will extract all the unique faults it has, total 14 kind of one. And using that array, I'm doing a for loop. So, so that I can plot the acceleration data for each kind of fault. Like for 14 BA, like 14 ball, uh, BA means ball fault. So for 14, like 14 uh, mils uh, fault on the ball one, then 14 mils fault on the inner race, 14 mils fault on uh, outer race one. Similarly, these are the fault signatures I have created. As you can see, and to see the entire data set, like entire data frame in one plot, I use this one. I, I use C1 scatter plot. So uh, this is the in the y axis you can see the acceleration data and as you can see everything is concatenated or one over another like same as an old data frame different faults so as you go on the x axis you will see different kind of faults all right so we have total 14 kind of faults here in the next step we'll use this data to uh, in convolutional neural network and do the pre-processing steps